Every project needs a great workshop, so we built one. And we will bring you videos every week with quick tips, giveaways, and lots of advice. So stay tuned. You may be familiar with a particular kind of mechanism that uses the flexibility of a material to provide force. I'm talking, of course, about compliant mechanisms. These little gadgets provide a surprising amount of force. It's actually extremely painful. And they don't require that much force in order to use. Instead, they use the flexibility and the compressibility of the material in order to provide force. So right now, I'm pushing down one side, which is elongating it here and compressing at the jaw, causing me to experience blinding pain. Compliant mechanisms are also great because they can be made with relatively few parts. This is literally just one part printed. And that's where 3D printing comes in. 3D printing shines when it comes to monolithic mechanisms. So you can print this really easily without any molds, extra materials or fixtures, just one piece. This project was intended to irritate my colleagues. So we went through a few iterations. Slingshot? No. Crossbow? No. BFG 9000? Maybe later. But then I saw a video on Facebook and when I saw it, I knew I had to try it. But unfortunately we couldn't find an STL, so we made it ourselves. I'm just thinking that flexible filament might not be the best choice for this application. I need it to be flexible, of course, yes, but I also need it to be rigid enough so that I can build up tension. And it doesn't have to be super rigid. If that happens, then it might explode in my face and I don't like taking shards of PLA out of my face. Most people don't. Usually when that happens, it's the printer god's way of telling you that you should stop using PLA for high strength applications. So this is gonna be a really basic design. Essentially, all we're making is a spring and a frame to hold it. When we pull back on the spring, tension builds up and releases our payload across the room, hopefully into someone's face. The original design was actually made of PETG, but I think PETG is a little bit too brittle. Okay, that was harder than I thought it was. So instead, we're gonna make it out of a more flexible material, so TPU or polypropylene. So let's get modeling. We're going to be using polypropylene as our filament of choice here. For those of you that don't know, polypropylene is a semi-flex material, so it's not quite as flexible as TPU, but not quite as rigid as something like PETG. Polypropylene is not the most commonly used material because it kind of has a bad rep. Bed adhesion with polypropylene can be challenging sometimes, but when you have the right adhesive, and we have one from Magico, which works well, it's not a difficult filament to print. And here we go. So here's our spring made of polypropylene. As you can see it's very flexible, but not too flexible. The one thing I was worried about was if it was too flexible, then the arm would bend instead of the whole spring bending. But this is perfect. So we can actually create some tension and see what it's gonna be like when it actually is in action. No boing sound though. Can you add a boing sound in post? Okay, let's assemble. So the only thing we need to do is slot in the spring into the frame. We've put in threaded inserts in the side here so it can be secured. Don't necessarily need to use threaded inserts. You can actually just use a super glue or an epoxy as there's not that much force being put on. But I love using threaded inserts. I make any excuse to use threaded inserts because it's so satisfying. I'm almost finished. I just need a projectile. So I printed this and it shouldn't kill anyone. So let's give it a shot. <laughs> we need to do some field tests. If you're interested in design, you can find it in the link below. It's on Thingy, so you can download it for free. And if you're interested in the materials we've used, visit us on our shop or send us an email. If you'll excuse me.